Hey, it's H.J. Welcome back to our 2nd John and 3rd John study. This is week two out of six. Today we're going to dive into the aspect of love and truth when it comes to our relationship with other people. Um, And the next week it's going to be love and truth when it comes to our relationship with people who are speaking falsely against who God is. So it's just love and truth and how it relates to those around us. So let's read it and let's dive in. So, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. All right. So right off the bat, I want to address the children lady situation. And we learned last week that, um, see right here it says children and over here it says dear lady. It's actually talking about a church. So he's writing to a church and he's affectionately um, calling it lady. Um, And if you want to know more about why, (laughs) watch last week's video. And then right here where it says some of your children are walking in the truth. What he's saying is I've run into some of the the believers in your congregation and I'm seeing their lives and they're walking in the truth. Um, So that's what he's talking about here. But one of the first things that we want to do whenever reading scripture, and we did this last week, is look at repetitive words. Again, because when words are repeated in scripture, it is pointing you towards the main idea or the main theme of what is going on. So bust out my little highlighter. I'm seeing the word truth, commands. Let's highlight them. So here I see walking in the truth as you were commanded by the Father. And I ask you, though we're writing you a commandment, but one we've had from the beginning that we love. I'm seeing love a few times. And this is love that we walk according to his commandments commandment just as you've heard from the beginning so that you walk in it another one i'm seeing is from the beginning and from the beginning so we got love truth walk and commandment that are some of the major repetitive words here um and it's really pointing towards what we're going to ultimately see here is that we're learning about believers walking or living. Walking is another word that means just like living out love and truth because ultimately we are commanded to do it. And so I want to talk about that commandment. Right off the bat, we see um, he says, some of your children are walking in the truth as they were commanded by the Father. And I want to look at this father aspect, okay? So right here, commanded by the father. It's talking about God being the authority for how believers should walk and live out their lives. And so one of the main questions that I want to bring it to is, is God your authority for how you live out your everyday life? Is God your authority for how you define what it means to live as a believer or to love others well or to um, walk in the truth? That's not something that we get to just decide. Well, I think that I should be able to do this because it seems nice or it feels good or I don't understand, you know, love is love or I don't understand why this is so bad or this is our society today and Jesus doesn't understand. He doesn't live here now. All of these ideas are not rooted in the fact that God the Father should be the ultimate authority in His Word for how we live our lives. So I think that's my first question. And I think one of the ways you can honestly answer that is to sit down and look how you make your decisions. Do you ever make hard decisions and say, I really want to do this. My flesh wants to do it. I think it'd be so fun. I think it would be this, that, or the other. But you know what? that doesn't honor the Lord. So I'm going to choose to give up my right to do whatever I want. And I'm going to choose to let the Lord guide my walk, especially as younger believers or more immature believers in the faith. We're going to have to make that decision a lot because our flesh still wants a lot of the things of this world. We still want to hold on to and grasp after and, and create goals that are set in this world and in this world's perspective of what is fun and what's happy and what's good. But we have to often say, but the world is not my authority and my emotions and my desires are not my authority. 
You are Jesus, and please help me to align and desire more and more so it's, it becomes less hard to choose your truth and your goodness over my selfish desires as I grow and mature in the faith. So that's something you may want to ask yourself. Just as you are commanded by your Father. All right. Um, and now I ask you, dear lady, which is the church, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. So he's saying, look, some of your congregations doing really great walking in the truth, but I have to also ask you, you need to continue to love one another. And let me tell you some of the differences here. So walking in the truth has a lot to do with our relationship with God. We just talked about that. Who's your authority? Who are you making decisions based off of? Who do you love when you live your life? So we would say um, relationship with God. But loving one another has a lot to do with our relationship with others. So we cannot say, and, it, and I love that it says, this is not a new commandment, but one that's been told to you from the beginning. So it's not like all of a sudden I'm asking you to live a different way or I'm asking you to add. But from the beginning, if you chose to live for God, you're also saying, I choose to love other people. We don't get to separate that. We don't get to say, well, I'm just doing my own thing. I love God, but these people are so annoying, or I don't want to be around them because we don't have anything in common, or I don't want to serve them because um, they don't believe the same things I think about you know, the home or politics or, or whatever it may be. The people in your church are not to be loved well and served well um, when it's easy for you or when you want to. But if you say you walk in the truth and your relationship with God is on point, then that means that your relationship with others must also be on point. You cannot separate them from one another. So he's like, hey, I see you doing the right thing in your relationship with God, right? But I'm going to have to ask you, are you loving other people as well? Because we can't just love God and not love other people. All right, so one of the things that, just to back it up for a second, this section right here is a little confusing because it's like, what do you mean that I'm not writing you a new command? What is this commandment you're talking about? So um, after reading through some commentaries, they're saying back in the book of John, which John also wrote, right? John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Revelation, other things like that. Um, Jesus gave a commandment and he said this in John 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, love, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So he's saying here, remember that commandment Jesus gave in John? That people will know you are truly walking in the truth by the way that you love each other. Remember that commandment? I need you to remember it and I need you to apply it to your life and I need you to walk in it. So he's seeing people that are doing well, living their life well, but he's like, y'all are missing the love part a little bit. So let's get back to that. And he goes on to further describe what that love is right here. And this is love. This is the love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment. This one we spoke about in John 13 just as you have heard from the beginning that you should walk in it. So he's kind of just repeating himself and he's saying, remember that commandment Jesus gave, you need to be walking in love. You need to be walking in right relationship with other people in your church, with other people around you. Let me get a color that you guys can see. Here, let's go with red. So this love is proof that you are truly walking in the truth because they are not separated. So I wrote down some questions. Whenever we are reading scripture, it is super important that we are creating questions for ourselves. We're looking at the text. What does this mean for me? Things like that, that really help us apply the scripture to our life. So here's some of the questions I wrote down, and I think it would be good for you to write these down and get into prayer with the Lord and answer these questions honestly. Can you separate loving God and loving his people? Here it's saying that you can't. Can you truly say you walk in truth if you deny the commandment to love each other? 
Is loving one another optional? Is God the authority in your life even when it comes to how you treat people? What does scripture say you are or aren't if you do not obey the commandment to love? So actually that's a really great question. Let's let's look at this again. So in John 13, we referred back to this commandment that's speaking of right here. I'll just write it so you know. John 13, wow. Today is a um, crazy pencil day and I apologize for that. Here, I'll delete some of this stuff. Um, John 13, 34 through 35, it says, And by this people will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So actually what it's saying is if you don't have love for one another, you're not actually my disciple. In, in the book of 1 John, which John also wrote, he really gets into how if you do not love Christ's bride, if you do not love God's people, you don't love God. You, you say that you love the Lord, but you don't want to go to church. You don't want to serve. You don't want to help or you don't want to care. You don't want to pray. You don't want to reach out. Um, you don't want to be around people. Like, do you really love God? Because you can't separate God from his bride. The same way you can't come to me and be like, HJ, girl, you're the homie. But like, I hate your husband. He's so annoying. I wouldn't like you in my house. I'd be like, well, then you don't like me because we are one and that's my husband. And, and you don't get to just have me and, and hate him. So... In a way, that's a small picture of what Jesus is saying here um, in 1 John, in John, in 2 John. He's all about the love. If you want to talk about love, just read read all these books. Um, another question that I ask is, in what ways do you love people well? So you might be really good at loving people. How do you serve people? How do you love them? How do you let them know you're here for them, you're praying for them, you care? But in what ways do you struggle to love people? Maybe there's a certain person or two that comes to your mind and you're like, ooh, Jesus. It is hard for me to love them. Um, think about it. Think about why. Think about how you can serve them to create and start to build up a heart that loves them. Can you separate living in truth, doing all the right things in your relationship with God, and living in love of others? So no, he's saying if you live in this truth, if you walk in this truth, which is remember your relationship with God, you must also love one another which is your relationship with others. We don't get to separate them. So um, Jesus just calls us so many times to equate our love for others with our love for him. And I just want to encourage you that if you are finding, if you're sitting and you're thinking and you're like, whoa, I really don't love people. Maybe I don't love God. Um, repent and, and ask the Lord to change your heart for people. That's such a beautiful thing is that the, the scripture is our authority. And the Holy Spirit is our helper to help us live out that godly authority over our lives. So you are not without godly help. All of the blessings of the Lord are ours. And we get to call on his name and say, Jesus, I'm having a hard time with this person. Or I've been extremely pulled back from community lately or I'm afraid to share my heart with people or I don't want to serve because maybe I'm just being selfish. We need to confess these sins to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to help us be godly people. And if you are watching this and maybe you're not a believer or you know somebody who isn't a believer, um, I just want to encourage you with the gospel is that we all fall short of this all the time. Scripture says we all fall short of the glory of God. We sin against the Holy God. But the beauty is, although we will have to pay for that sin because God is holy and we are not, Jesus came to live the perfect life, sinless life that we could never live. He kept, he kept these commandments perfectly. He loved people perfectly. He did everything perfectly and without sin. And he died on the cross to pay for our sins that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And you can have your sins paid for and you can Put your hope in Christ and be in the family of God and have a new heart that does love God and does love people. All you have to do is repent of your sins and put your faith in Christ. I love you guys and I'll see you next week for 2 John week 3. We are going to be talking about um, love and truth when it comes to false teachers in the church or people just speaking falsely about the Lord. And I think that will be another angle of truth and love that will be really good for us. Um, I love you and talk soon. Bye.